So, before I get to what I was supposed to be talking about, <clears throat> no, actually, no, I'll leave it till last. So, yeah, I'll talk about Laser Team in a minute. And I'll give some full disclosure on that issue as well. Because uh, I may be partially biased. I'll, I'll get to that. First, I have to bring up the story that's propped up pretty much within the last 24 hours. So, one of the games that was garnering quite a lot of interest uh, in sort of weird terms, as usual, was Ant Simulator. Did a Kickstarter, did uh, pretty well from what I remember. And uh, I mean, it looked like we were going to see the project at some point. Until today. In which the lead developer, I'll just get his name up on the article, uh, Eric Tarashinsky, Eric Tarashinsky, um, put up a YouTube video, which Admittedly, you know there's something interesting when it says, I will send an email shortly to the people who pre-ordered the game about getting you a refund. So that's already a bit dodgy. But it gets beautiful. Um, so, Eric resigned from this project. And obviously these are allegations from him. And there's no proof of this, but I wouldn't be surprised considering what we've heard about, you know, some people and uh, the way they're dealing with making games. And various sort of Kickstarters that haven't been, you know, fully, fully, uh, <clears throat> fully produced, you know, after meeting the goal and whatever. So, according to Eric... There was no chance of the thing being even made in that his business partners, who I think he said that he's known for about 10 or 11 years, uh, decided to take uh, the majority of not only the Kickstarter money, but the money that they've had invested from private people to make Ant Simulator, that money has been used on liquor, on restaurants and bars, and even strippers. And then the added, you know, giant twist, because of the uh, LLC that he signed with his friends, um, you know, he says in a YouTube comment that they uh, went over the contract line by line and I reviewed it twice and didn't realise they protected themselves and screwed me over, like the fact that they listed themselves as consultants so they aren't legally obliged to work on anything, but still have the rights to spend the money, and uh, he had no idea what their plan was until it's too late. So much so that after leaving... They pretty much directly said to him, if you try and re release Ant Simulator without us, we'll sue you. So therefore, resigning and cancelling the entire project is the only option available to him. Now a lot of uh, legal people, you know, he says that he doesn't want to go and take it into court because it will cost too much. Quite a few pe people have offered uh, their services pro bono, aka, you know, like no win, no fee sort of deal, in terms of uh, standing up for this, because in essence, this is the one thing which could become a giant problem. We've already sort of seen it with, um, oh, I think it was, I'm going into wrestling here, Barbie Hayden, I think, started a Kickstarter so she had enough money to move house. And a lot of people didn't like that. 
But the thing is, it's specified. She did it. She actually used the money to do that. It's sort of... I don't know whether Kickstarter is the right place to go to do that thing. But... Um, at least she fulfilled the promise. I don't know what, you know, I don't know what all the details were about it, but, you know. Um, you've had a lot of things like, uh, the, the Yogscast game thing that they were doing that made its money, and then they announced it's cancelled. Um, wasn't there a Silicon Knights game that, I think was just it was it was funded, but then they actually cancelled the project ba basically because the place was going out of business anyway. So I guess the stretch goal was actually the real goal that they wanted. So who knows? But yeah, the fact that because oh, oh, looking at it. Even though that they are technically only considered as consultants, according to the description of the contract, because they have spent the money, allegedly, on the things that they have, I think they still have to be legally, uh, legally accountable for the whole project even though they're only consultants. They don't have to do anything regarding the thing, but because they are taking money away that was set to be uh, used to create Ant Simulator and used it for other means, I'd say there's some legal sort of stuff there. If you're going to stick with the legal stuff, I guess, you know, I didn't even want to bring it up, but the whole, the Fine Brothers stuff, it's sort of a similar vein. We're getting into this, I mean, that's for gaming, but in YouTube terms, uh, the Fine Brothers and the way that they've sort of handled everything since the whole React World thing got announced and launched has been less than great. I understand what they're trying to do, but the problem is, and you, there's plenty of videos that are out there, um, let me quickly see if I can find them, um, I mean, you've got the sort of basic explanation video with a run-through of the Fine Brothers video itself on, uh, uh, Boogie2988's channel. You can go there. Um, I won't put the links in the description because, you know, then the Fine Brothers will come after me. Uh, probably. But if, if, you, if you just search for the most recent videos from these three guys that I'm mentioning, you'll find it. So if you just go to their channels and, you know, if you like what you see, you know, check what else is on their channels and give them a sub as well. Because there's a lot of informative comments from these uh, guys. Um, you also got Alpha Omega Sin, who's very much on the the anti side, like super super anti, like you know, cussing and everything and all that. Which you know, I know I do that on the wrestling stuff, and you know I could do it here, but because I'm not that much bothered by the Fine Brothers output. Uh, mainly because the sort of thing that they've been doing has existed, at least in television form, for, ooh, at least 20, 30, if not more than that, years. I'm just thinking of UK stuff, you know, there they probably, it probably was the equivalent around the world. Either way, uh, Alpha Omega Sin's couple of videos, you know, railing on them hard, is pretty interesting just to see it from the the huge anti side but then you've got the the methodical explanation of why everything here is crap and uh, let me just get it uh, it's on the YouTube channel folding ideas uh, from Dan Olson 
Uh, just search for uh, Mini Sode React World. Uh, it got posted up um, Sunday, if you want a sort of a date of when it came out. But it's a nine minute video of sorts, which explains how, you know, in theory it's a good concept. But there's a heck of a lot of practical niggles and everything, which makes it a a, a, a multimedia minefield. On top of that, you've got Nostalgia Critic uh, and quite a lot of other YouTubers. But Nostalgia Critic was the one that really sort of made it public, and you know I'm subscribed to his content and everything on YouTube, talking about um, how Studio Ghibli in Japan. Uh, decided to copyright strike one of his videos. And uh, for some reason, that resulted in the entire channel not being monetized at all for the last three to four weeks. Which is, you know, not really not good for the, the people at all. Because really, that's the that's the only way they're making the revenue from doing these things. But um, within hours of putting the video up, it was reinstated. But the key thing was, and this is one of the issues that's happening here on YouTube, is there was a distinct lack of communication directly from YouTube from an actual person. Everything that's been wrong with YouTube the, the past few years has really encompassed this. Um, and that is the automated copyright stuff. It's just very, very messy. And I don't mean the football player, slash soccer player. So, on a more positive note, um, just a quick roundup of how uh, I was really impressed by Laser Team. You know, the first feature film from Rooster Teeth, the guys behind Red vs. Blue, and Rooster Teeth Podcast, and you know, the Achievement Hunter, the No, all that stuff. Um, you know, the full disclosure here for this is technically I sort of funded the thing to happen. I did, I think I put, I think I put in the money after it was happening. So I knew that um, it was funded. But it was just a case of, you know, helping them out because the whole concept of the project sounded really good. You know, a sci-fi sort of comedy thing. Um, and, you know, per sort of the, uh, it's not really a non-disclosure agreement that Rooster Teeth have sent me, you know, when they sent me my digital copy. Um, but they basically said, don't spoil anything. So I don't want to really ruin as much for it as possible. Uh, I don't know when it's being added on YouTube Red. I don't even know if YouTube Red even has it on now, because YouTube Red isn't available in the UK yet. So it may be on there if you wanted to check it out. I'm pretty sure it's available in other places, like, the home media releases will be coming at some point as well. But um, the the film itself, you know, they did, they did uh, quite a few screenings across the world, but uh, there was one that was actually local to me that I did get a chance to see on uh, Friday. And... I was impressed, mainly impressed, because there was actually a giant audience of people watching it. Because most of the time when I go to the cinema, to my local ones, they ain't that busy. So it was refreshing to, you know, go and actually have a screen that was, I'd say somewhere like 60 to 75% full. Which, considering how some, most of the times, perhaps it's because when I go in the week, or at the wrong time at the weekend, but sometimes there's barely about 15 or 20 people in the screen, whereas I'd say at least, ooh, uh, 100 to 150 
were probably in the screen that I went to. Uh, you know, reacting to sort of the in jokes to the people that know the Rusity stuff, and obviously some of the you know the jokes which will just work with everybody, even if they haven't seen a Rusity film before. I will say there is a very funny afro. I'm, all I'm saying is there's a very funny afro moment. That's all I'm saying. You'll know what happens when you see it. But, you know, Bernie, Gavin, uh, Colton, and uh, Michael did a great job in the leads. All the supporting cast as well. A couple of interesting cameos here and there. A um, whole bunch of stuff. It was uh, really... It was a nice experience, you know, to be around people. You know, it was great that about 60 to 70% of the people stayed in the screen because I guess some of them paid enough money in the uh, Indiegogo to actually get their name on the screen uh, as a Indiegogo uh, backer listed. Uh, my name didn't appear in the list. Which I was I was getting a bit confused about because it did say Indiegogo backers, but then, you know, I heard somebody behind me say, "Oh, you know, you had to give like three or four hundred dollars," and it's like, I ain't got that much money. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really it, it's a really enjoyable little film that if you can see it somehow, uh, I suggest you do. It was a great experience seeing it on the big screen. Um, just because, uh, you know, it's techni technically it's a movie that I sort of made. It's a movie that I contributed to. You know, although I technically didn't contribute to the Bedrooms to Billions documentary that I saw uh, at. EGX 2014. Um, I did, you know, pre pre order the DVD before you know the pre orders went dead, which um, which doesn't really count. That's the closest that I had to actually saying I I sort of made this film. And in Laser Team, it's the first time where I can say, even though it may have been only like 35 or $40 or something, I made that movie. Or I contributed to the making of that movie. It, w it wouldn't have been a case of, if it hadn't have been for my $40, it wouldn't have been made. But it's just nice to see that it's... You... You know, because some people have like uh, invested or put money into things, and when they got what was delivered to them, you know, they've been less than impressed. But with Rooster Teeth, it was probably on a par with, if not exceeded, you know, my expectations. And um, yeah, I, I can I can talk about it not all night, but. Uh, Go and check it out if you can. As I say, before all that, go check out the videos from uh, the channels on Folding Ideas, Alpha Omega Sin, and Boogie2988 for the Fine Brothers stuff. Uh, check out um, all the craziness that's probably going to go on in the next seven days. And... I guess in a couple of weeks I can actually react to the Writers Guild of America awards because there's a little bit in the vi in that category for video games as well, and then I think because we're coming up to March we've got the GDC awards, which is always a good one. The video game BAFTAs I have no clue when they're happening, but they're coming, and. You know, that'll, that'll be most of the I think that'll be the award stuff done. But, um, you know, who knows what will happen in the next seven days. That's the that's the genius of this format of the thing. I don't know what I'm going to be talking about in seven days. It's just to see who does good and who does shit. 